In a white room, an incarcerated volunteer named Ray is in the Spiderhead clinical trial program. He gives two men permission to administer a drug, namely G46, on him. They then proceed to tell him various jokes he laughs at. The jokes then cross over to facts, where Ray is told tragic facts about death and even the news of his own sentence. He laughs at the sad news hysterically too. The two men communicating with him, Steve and Verlaine, celebrate as they witness this. The next participant is Jeff, who has a new compound named N40 administered to him outdoors. He's then asked to take his blindfold off. He sees the clouds and thinks it's beautiful. Steve asks Mark to increase B15, which is a drug that increases verbal use effects. The scene changes to Jeff coming up to Lizzie. He tells her he's been gone doing drug tests. Back outdoors, Jeff reports that he's speechless over the beautiful scenery. Jeff's thoughts transport to a party where he's chilling with a girl he seems to like. In his drunken state, he decides to drive somewhere with a friend of his. He doesn't focus and they crash to a tree. Jeff sleeps the tragic flashback away. The next day, Jeff has another appointment with Steve. He sat in front of a girl with an attitude called Heather. Steve asks them both what their impression of each other is, since they've never met before. They're asked to scale their attraction to one another, which they both give rude answers to. After agreeing to have N40 administered to them though, they start shying away from each other and stating to Steve that they suddenly found each other attractive. The amount of B15 in the two of them is increased to get them to express how they feel. They tell each other that they're the most beautiful thing they've ever seen and proceed to make out in the experiment room. They have sex in front of them and Heather sleeps in Jeff's embrace. He tells her he's suddenly a fan of cuddling. Steve and Mark are left in awe as they witness Jeff tell Heather that he loves her and she says it back. They call N40 the love drug. Steve asks his partner to observe the two of them after they return from their high, particularly if they'll reach out to each other afterwards. Passing out snacks with Lizzie, Jeff approaches Heather, but just leaves awkwardly. The next experiment, Jeff sat with Sarah, an old woman who can't wait to get the drugs administered to her. Jeff doesn't seem to be as enthusiastic, but after getting dosed, the two have aggressive sex right there before Jeff leaves. Mark changes up Jeff's Moby Pack, which is the device on his body where the drugs are kept for administration. He tells Jeff to not let the girls touch it during his encounters with them, since it can easily flood and make him lose control. Jeff asks Mark to release him from snacks because he needed some change. The following day, Jeff meets with Steve and Mark, this time as an observer rather than a participant. They have two rooms running. One of them is occupied by Dave, who he's told to pay no attention to since he's too busy munching on food. The next room, there's the two women who Jeff hooked up with, Sarah and Heather. Steve presents Jeff with a choice. He shows him a remote where he has to decide who's drugged with Darkenflox, which is a drug Jeff has a bad experience with. Jeff is uncomfortable, claiming that the options are random since he doesn't feel anything for either of these women and just doesn't want them to experience the agitating drug. He prefers that neither of them experience discomfort. Convinced that Jeff cares about both women, Steve lets them leave without getting dark and floxed. He gives Jeff a speech about how far they've come with N40 and how it may be the means to a better world. Steve asks Jeff what his biggest wish is, to which he replies, is to go back in time to the night that he crashed the car and killed his friend in the passenger seat. Steve proceeds to tell him that this is his chance of redemption. Jeff is temporarily authorized to use a phone, which he uses to call Emma. He leaves a voicemail telling her he's sorry, and this is the last apology she'll hear from him. Jeff returns to Lizzie, wearing a silly outfit and having fun without the influence of drugs. Steve places Jeff and Rogan in a room. Jeff doesn't agree to get any drug administered to him, since he's scared of getting intimate with the scary looking guy in front of him. He's then assured that it's not the love drug they're tasting out on him today, but a chill pill. Nothing happens, and they're asked to leave. Rogan leaves immediately, but Jeff barges into the room where Steve and Mark sit to see Heather with them. He asks her if she was asked to darken Flux either him or Rogan. He also asks her if she had sex with Rogan prior to this and fell in love with him just the same. She agrees with both questions. After Heather leaves, Jeff snaps on Steve and Mark, asking why they're making everyone hook up with each other. Steve shows him that it's an experimental design that they have no control over. Jeff says it doesn't feel right to him. This concerns Steve, so he has no choice but to put him in his place by reminding him he's a prisoner who applied and got approved for the experiments. He mentions the various privileges Jeff's getting in the facility that's based on mutual respect and the words Steve puts in for him. Jeff apologizes and tells them they can count on him. 
Jeff and Rogan are back in the room again, except this time it's Sarah who decides who gets dark and floxed. Later on, Mark tells Steve that he agrees with Jeff regarding the use of dark and flux. Steve brushes it away, claiming that it's going back into the drawer in a week. That night, Steve dances around his room cheerfully. He's then seen administering N40 on himself. Jeff describes to Lizzie about how Dark and Flocks felt for him. He tells her it felt so much worse than being on fire, that he wanted to set himself on fire to make the discomfort stop. Lizzie comforts him as he tells her of the various things that trouble him. He claims that being with her is the only time he feels like himself, which is rare to him. The camera cuts to Mark, fixing up Steve's Moby Pack, telling him that he should have been able to assess the risks without taking them. Steve tells Mark that as a frontman of the drugs, he should be able to answer to the critics, as someone who's experienced them too. They don't notice Jeff walking in on them. He sees Steve's Moby Pack, but apologizes for the silent entrance, and leaves instead. Back at the experiment rooms, Steve gives Jeff a seat, and demonstrates how the protocol committee weren't satisfied with everyone's mercy on each other with the darkened flocks, and decided that they'll just give it to Heather anyway and see what he thinks instead. Jeff tells Steve that he doesn't want Heather to be dark and floxed. Steve asks him if he's saying that out of love, which Jeff refuses. He tells Jeff that if he knew Heather's backstory, he would have entertained seeing her uncomfortable. Jeff still remains uncooperative. Seeing this, Steve decides to give Jeff some time and leaves. He enters the kitchen where Lizzie's working. He initiates a conversation with her. She thanks him for helping her get to where she is right now and he tells her something about her past that he claims will remain as their little secret. Returning after his coffee break, Steve lies to Jeff about talking to the committee while he was gone and claims that they insist that the test continues as scheduled unless he wants to be removed from the program and sent back to the state. Jeff is left with no choice but to acknowledge the drip. Heather, oblivious to what she's putting up with, acknowledges too. The darkened flux enters her system as they increase the B15 in Jeff to get him to explain what he's seeing and feeling. He begins by describing Heather's initial nauseous and painful state. She starts to cry, confused by what she's feeling. He tells them that all he could think of is how Heather was once a child, loved by her parents, and not aware that she's capable of doing something bad, which would separate her once and for all from love. Steve proceeds to ask him if he loves her as Heather attacks the glass wall, begging them for help. Jeff answers, no. Going around deliriously, Heather messes with her Moby Pack, which leads to the darkened Flux flooding into her and her getting aggressive. She breaks stuff and raises a sharp piece from the floor as the others panic. As this unfolds, Jeff is still narrating his thoughts. He says he's responsible for the torment Heather's feeling at the moment. Steve tells her to take a deep breath through the microphone. She goes silent for a moment, staring at her weapon, and Jeff realizes what's about to happen. Heather stabs herself on the neck as blood gushes out on the glass, separating them. Steve and Jeff watch in horror as she falls to her death. Steve locks the drawer and heads to the scene, accidentally dropping the keys on his way out. As Steve and Mark argue over what just happened, Jeff grabs the keys and takes a notebook from the drawer. He realizes that the prison is Steve's own pharmaceutical company. Rather than a federal institution, he finds a bingo card, which he figures is the number attached to the name of the drugs. Suddenly, Steve gets a feeling to return to Jeff, who manages to put everything back in time. Steve warns him to not tell anyone of what he'd just witnessed, unless he wants the facility to be shut down. Jeff is still saddened by what has unfolded, but Steve seems to make him feel better by telling him it's all for the right reasons. That night, the two have fun talking about funny incidents from the past. It's then revealed that they're under the influence of a laughter-inducing substance. Back at the experiment rooms, Lizzie is administered with darkened flocks, which messes with her head and makes her scared of a stapler. Steve enjoys the sight, almost seeming like a psychopath. The scene cuts to Jeff and Lizzie getting close to each other. He reveals that he not only killed his friend in the car crash, but his girlfriend, Emma, was bombed inside the burning car too. This means he's been leaving dead girl voicemails every time he was allowed to use the phone in the facility. He also blames himself for participating in Heather's death. Lizzie comforts him, and tells him it's not his fault. It's obvious that the two are in love. Steve notices this and thinks of ways to exploit it. That evening, Jeff is sat inside the observation room again and told that Lizzie will have darkened flocks administered to her. Jeff angrily demands that they stop the madness. Steve decides that they call it a night and proceed in the morning. After Jeff leaves, he tells Mark to double his dose. Mark arrives at Jeff's room to organize his Moby Pack. 
Jeff confronts Mark and tells him he knows there's no protocol committee and that this is Steve's company. He goes on to tell Mark that he knows he's naming his drugs based off of bingo card numbers and that all the N40 talk about love is a cover up for Steve's main interest, which is a red drug called B6 that Mark initially called placebo. Jeff asks Mark how he ended up being involved in this. Mark breaks down, claiming to have entered in an attempt to help people and make a change. Jeff tells him it's not too late for that. The next morning, Steve asks Jeff to administer Darkenflox on Lizzie. Jeff, fortunately, takes over Steve's Moby Pack, forcing him to confess that B6 is the main focus of the program and that the other drugs are just side projects. The inmates were actually under the influence of this obedience drug this whole time, and Jeff actually finished his sentence seven months ago. Lizzie's appeal for release had passed the previous week too. Steve takes out a knife on Jeff and refuses to release Lizzie. He then takes the phone away and releases four vials of Darkenflox into Lizzie's system, putting her through extreme pain. The two men have a fist fight. Jeff manages to damage Steve's Moby Pack and disarm him. He enters the room where Lizzie's throwing stuff around and removes the Darkenflox vials off of her. Confessing his love, Steve orders the other inmates to attack them, which they're obedient to. They manage to escape the spider headquarters as Mark reaches the island with the police. Steve attempts to escape through a float boat, but crashes since he's intoxicated with the flood of drugs from his broken Moby Pack. Jeff and Lizzie escape through a motorboat. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.